This is The Big AR Show. Hello and welcome to The Big AR Show. My name is Chris Black and today I'm going to show you how VisorT can help you enhance any broadcast using augmented reality graphics in the studio. But first, let me tell you a little bit about what we're doing with this show today. This show is going to be sent to Facebook Live using our tools, our automation system, uh, Viz Opus. And Viz Opus is going to be live streaming this over to Facebook Live. You'll be able to see it on the uh, VizRT Middle East Facebook page. So let's get started in the show. Uh, just behind me, we have an iViz uh, video wall. And this is not your average video wall that you see in your uh, control room or your studio that has a rectangular video wall. The iViz video wall allows you to create any shape, any design that you want to have a very unique look to your video walls in your studio. And with this video wall today, we're going to be adding a virtual set to the studio without the need of a green screen or blue screen. Also in front of me, we have a camera mounted on a jib, and this is a uh, Stipe mechanical tracking system. So as the camera moves around the studio, we're sending tracking data, the movement of the information, information of the camera over to our Viz Virtual Studio software so that you can see that movement. We also have mounted with this the brand new uh, Red Spy optical tracking system from Stipe, and they have these markers on the floor just in front of me where the Red uh, Spy system is tracking the movement of the camera so that it can send that data over to our virtual set system. And of course, our director, Faisal, is directing the entire thing right over here using the Viz Virtual Studio software. So let's get started. Let's bring a virtual set into our studio today. Here we go. Now, uh, Faisal, the studio, studio is a little dark. Can we bring the lights? Thank you very much. Now, we have real-time lighting in our virtual studios. And when you're using automation systems like the Viz Mozart automation system, you can tie together the virtual lighting in the virtual set with the physical lighting in your studio. So both worlds are working together, and you have a co cohesive look of your virtual studio and your presenters. Now, as the camera moves around, you're also seeing a lot of movement in the virtual set here. This is what we call the virtual window, because it is a full virtual studio added to our video wall. And by using the virtual window, we're adding more room and our studio by expanding into the video wall to tell different kinds of stories. But this is the big AR show, so let's bring some augmented reality graphics into the studio today. There we go. So now here we have some pretty basic augmented reality graphics that we've added in. Now these graphics are part of a journalist-driven workflow, meaning your journalist in the newsroom can open up their newsroom system and be able to change out the images, the text, graphics, anything they want, and build a playlist so they can have AR graphics for every show and every story. So it's very easy for the journalists to be able to add this content to their story. So let's take a look at some of the other things that we can do with augmented reality graphics in the studio. And for that, we're going to do a combination of AR elements and the video wall. So let's bring in our first story, talking about the Charles de Gaulle aircraft carrier from France. Now here in our video wall, we have this background, but if you look at the monitors just above my head, you'll be able to see the augmented reality output. And there we've already started adding in some AR elements, such as this text. So as the camera moves around, this is giving you a little bit more uh, depth perception for the graphics. So you have a different way of being able to look at the content within the studio. And so, so we also have this large uh, studio floor here. We can take advantage of that and use this as a storytelling surface. So let's bring some graphics into the studio. There we go. There's our door. Let's open up the door and take a look at what's going on in the basement of the VizRT booth. Here we go. And of course, we keep an aircraft carrier in our basement, as everybody does. And so this is the USS Charles de Gaulle. Not USS Charles de Gaulle. That's the United States uh, aircraft carrier. This is a French aircraft carrier. And this uh, aircraft carrier is 261 meters long. It has a top speed of 50 kilometers per hour. Now, these uh, graphics allow us to be able to tell the story of this aircraft carrier in, in a very entertaining way. So we can have all these different elements coming in here to be able to tell a complex story in a very clear way. So we can also take a look at, uh, go over to the aircraft carrier and see that it has a uh, capacity of 40 aircraft in it, including uh, 30 Joint Strike Fighters. And the other aircraft in this can be helicopters, can be reconnaissance vehicles, rescue vehicles, and the other things that it needs to be able to uh, function at sea. Now, we also are able to do different kinds of animations with these 3D objects, such as doing nice transitions, where we can have an aircraft taking off from the aircraft carrier and then flying into the studio here. And actually, here we have now that French fighter jet. Now, uh, these jets cost around 90 uh, million euros to build, and they, have a, uh, they also cost around 16 million euros per hour to fly. They're armed with uh, radar-guided and satellite-guided missiles that can also be nuclear-tipped. Now, this is a fairly small fighter. It's only 15.3 meters long and has a wingspan of 10.8 uh, meters, making it perfect for an aircraft carrier. But OK, we've seen enough of this jet. Let's fly it out of the studio and take a look at a few other AR elements in the studio. 
Now, our friends in the United States, the Weather Channel, have used augmented reality graphics all the time. And they use this to be able to tell complex weather stories in a very clear and entertaining way. So let's take a look at one of those stories. And let's bring in Mount Everest into our studio. Now, this is using the Viz World real-time 3D mapping system where we can bring in terrain data for anywhere in the world and place that into the virtual studio. So here we have this uh, map of Mount Everest. And you can already see we've added some elements to help us tell a story, such as that avalanche that's happening there. Now, if you want to talk about the challenges that a climber faces, challenging uh, climbing Mount Everest, you have to start at the base camp at 18,000 feet. And this is where they need to start and stay for a few days to get acclimated to the elevation. Now, once they start going up the mountain, up to 19,000 feet, the danger starts coming in. We have those avalanches. You also have those crevasses, those deep ravines that they must cross using the ladder bridges that you see coming in here. Now, moving on up the mountain, we can go up to 24,000 feet. And using tools like our Viz Weather System, we can start bringing in weather data from like uh, uh, Arab uh, weather and be able to uh, uh, display this in many different ways. So we have this fog moving in and giving you zero visibility. And if you move on up to the top of the mountain, Congratulations, you've made it, but you're not out of the woods yet. There's still dangers here, such as uh, uh, the uh, uh, low oxygen and also the thin atmosphere. And that can give you all kinds of health risks. Now, if you do run into trouble in the mountain, don't worry, you have to have your, you have your teammates there with you to help you get down on the mountain. But rescue vehicles can't make it up to these upper elevations. In fact, we do have a rescue vehicle making its way up the mountain right now. Let's see here. Where is that? There is that helicopter right there. Now, these helicopters can do low-level rescues down to like 18,000 feet. But once they get to a certain point, the atmosphere is too thin, and they can lose lift, and it's dangerous for everybody involved. Whoa. Now, we can also be able to display weather data using augmented reality graphics in the studio. And we want to bring in some weather data here. Let's bring in some uh, radar data of a supercell. Now, a supercell is one of those storms that gives birth to a tornado. And here we can see that radar signature of that supercell. In fact, right over here, you see that little hook echo there. That tells you that there is a tornado in this storm. Now, these supercells are massive storms. So let's take a look at the cross section of this uh, supercell. We'll raise this whole thing up there so you can see this is going to be 30, 40, 50,000 feet in elevation. Massive storm. And at the base of that storm, that's where the tornado is. So let's lift this up and take a closer look at that tornado. There we go. So here is that tornado, now, that classic funnel cloud. <clears throat> that classic funnel cloud. And the tornado is caused by a downdraft of cool air meeting a warm, uh, moist air, air going around and creating that rotation that you see here. Now, when that funnel cloud comes down and touches ground, it's going to create a debris cloud, picking up everything it touches on the ground and throwing it out of the air in a very high rate of speed, which makes it very, very dangerous for anybody that's nearby. But using these types of tools with augmented reality, you're going to be doing this on a maybe day-to-day -day basis for special stories. But you can also use augmented reality uh, for every weather story to be able to give you a different way of looking at the weather content instead of using a green screen or blue screen with a presenter standing in front of it. So let's bring some augmented reality weather stories into our studio floor. Here we are. So here we have this weather map. And again, this is still your daily weather forecast, where we're bringing the Ara Arabia weather data, adding it to our map. And instead of having it in the green screen behind me, I have it as AR elements. With the AR elements, we are able to now use the camera to be able to transition to these different areas to give a very, very different perspective and a more entertaining perspective of how the daily weather is progressing. We can look at things such as the temperature for the different cities, or if we switch over and take a look at some of the other weather data, we can also visualize the data in uh, varying different ways. Let's take a look at the uh, wind maps for the uh, Central Atlantic region. So here we have the uh, wind data coming in, and again, this is using that Arabia weather data so we can visualize what the wind speeds are in the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we can also bring in the, time, the temperature data, and they'll be able to bring in these artificial clouds that are all being generated based upon that weather data in Viz Engine, our real-time 3D graphics engine. So using your day-to-day -day weather pres presentation with augmented reality gives you a very different way of taking this to your audience every day in a very entertaining way. But let's take a look at some other data that we can bring into the uh, studio. And for that, we're going to go over to our friends at Astuce Media and take a look at their data platform, which allows us to visualize and control data coming from live sports events. So let's take a look at the match between Barcelona and Paris and see what we can do with that here with augmented reality graphics in the studio.
All right, so here we have our football pitch. All the players are running on out there. Now, Faisal, our director, has control over the Astuce Media data platform. So if you want to see how you can control this data platform, you can go behind him and see him at work. Now, we have all of these players here. So Faisal has the ability to grab each player and move him around on the football pitch. So you can see them start moving around and running around. If I had a touch screen in my hand, I would also be able to interact with all of these, giving me complete control over this content. Now, we can also visualize the data of each one of these players during the game. So let's bring in some heat maps here to see how some of these players performed. All right, so here we have the heat map coming in. There's uh, Ter Stegen, who is a goalkeeper. So we can see right over here, yeah, he's a goalkeeper. He's staying there uh, in his goals most of the time. What else do we have here? All right, so here is uh, Messi. You can see Messi was all over the Paris side uh, with, uh, based upon that heat map. Let's see all of Barcelona's heat map for the entire team. There we go. So you can see now this is the heat map for Barcelona. They really put a lot of pressure on Paris on this game and completely dominated them during the match. But let's also go do a player-to-player uh, -player comparison and bring them into the studio. So here we have our player-to-player -player comparison. Now, with this, we can bring in the AR elements and completely wrap your presenter in augmented reality graphics to be able to tell different stories. So here I have uh, Messi, uh, and he's had uh, 45 total passes, and there's Draxler right over here. He had 17 total passes. And by going through all of the data of the game, we can take a look at how each player compared to other players and really tell a story of what happened during that match. Now, I've got one more thing I want to show you guys today, something a little bit different. Uh, are you ready for this? I think we're going to have some uh, wildlife come into the studio here. So let's see what's going on here. Hmm. I think I heard some horses over here uh, making some sounds. Oh, yeah, whoa, there we go. Whoa, got to watch out for that guy. So what we're doing now is we're tying together Viz Engine, our real-time 3D graphics engine, with the Unreal Engine to give you the full flexibility of having any kind of design in your studio. Now, Unreal Engine has a lot of assets available online, so you can go to any website, be able to download this content, and add it to Viz Engine. And this allows us to have the full journalist workflow of VizRT mixed with the capabilities of the Unreal Engine within your studio. And we can bring this in as augmented reality elements that you see here, or we can make the entire virtual set part of an Unreal Engine platform with the journalist-driven workflow from VizRT layered on top of it. So let's take a look at bringing in the virtual set here. And what we're going to do with this is turn the audience into our virtual studio and turn the camera around and take a closer look at this. So we're going to bring in the Paragon Christmas special onto our uh, studio here, and we'll take a look in just a moment. There we are. So this is uh, Paragon, the uh, Epic Games Paragon Virtual Studio that they used over uh, Christmas in the United States. And we can pan the camera around. Now, this is a full virtual set. So using the uh, Stipe uh, tracking system, you can see that we can pan around and have com full control over the studio and be able to look anywhere we want. So we're panning all the way now, pointing out into the audience so we can extend beyond the set and really move around here and have some nice control of this. And now these elements, since they're brought into the VizRT environment, we're now adding in the layer of the journalist-driven workflow that we have with all of our other tools, along with the rendering of the Unreal Engine. Now, if you have any questions about how all this is done, we have our virtual set specialist here today to be able to answer them for you. I also invite you to walk around to the rest of the VizRT booth, take a look at the other tools that we have to help you visualize any story, including sports, weather, menu asset management, and also driving your Facebook Live productions. Thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of the day here at CapSat.